All right, all right, all right. We're back here at the Rock Cave coming to you with Song of the Day. I'm your host, Mark Pierce. As usual, today is Thursday, July 23rd. Hope you're all still listening to Dan Byrne yesterday's song. Two songs of quirky little numbers. If you haven't had a chance to listen, give it a listen. It's worth it. All right, so what do we got going on today? Well, I did mention it yesterday. We got a birthday yesterday, and that's Don Henley, and we'll talk about him in a minute. But let's run down the music history for today. First and foremost, not a whole lot to report. Today in 1966, two things. Strangers in the Night, the album from Frank Sinatra, is number one. Uh, and it's his most selling album out of all of his albums, over a million copies sold. Also in 1966, in that summer, moving up the charts rapidly is a perfect summer song. The Love and Spoonful, Summer in the City. Love that band, Love and Spoonful. If you uh, haven't heard them in a while, give them a chance. They've got some great songs out there. 1977, Judas Priest starts their first American tour, opening up for none other than Led Zeppelin. Uh... That was basically it as far as music history is concerned. The only birthdays that came up were David Essex. Remember that song Rock On from 1973? That's a good song. And Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. He has a birthday today. Depeche Mode, I'm a huge Depeche Mode fan. Haven't covered them on Song of the Day yet. We absolutely will. Um, and probably more than once because they got a ton of great stuff and I, I just love that band. So we'll get to them. But back to Don Henley. Don Henley, born in Texas, raised in Texas, uh, rural Texas, really. Um, unremarkable as far as school age, high school. He's a football player. Turns out he's a little small for a football player. The coach kind of convinces him to drop out and join band, and he does. And he actually forms a band called the Four Speeds, and it's a Dixieland band. Uh, then he changes up some things, and they name their band Felicity. And then they're starting to get a little bit of attention, a little bit, and they run into a local star, none other than Kenny Rogers, who likes their band and decides to uh, work with them. Convinces them to change their name to Shiloh and move to California, LA. They live in Kenny Rogers' house for like three months while he produces their record, and they put out one record, Shiloh. Tragedy struck. One of the members was killed in a dirt bike accident right before it was released. And the band was also kind of at odds with the direction of their music. So it kind of fizzled out after that. But by that point, they were signed to Amos Records. And also signed to Amos Records was uh, one, n none other than one of the future Eagles, Glenn Fry. So they meet, and somehow or another, they get recruited to be the backing band for Linda Ronstadt. If you didn't know this yet, it's pretty amazing if you watch that documentary, The Story of the Eagles. Uh, it's an amazing documentary. It's well worth it. But they have the footage. You can just look at the footage on YouTube if you want. But there they are. There's basically the Eagles being the backup band for Linda Ronstadt. Uh, Don Henley playing drums. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, if you don't for, if you forget, was huge, was absolutely huge, and she was projected to, to be a mega star. So this was a big deal to be there, her backing band on tour. The, the backup band was so good that they decided they wanted to form their own band, and they do. They form the Eagles. And Linda Ronstadt wasn't even mad. She was, she said, "Yeah, you guys are really good. You should have your own band." Uh, I'm not going to cover the Eagles because we'll do that another time, but obviously we know what happened with the Eagles and uh, Don Henley sang a ton of their uh, most beloved songs, Desperado, Witchy Woman, Best of My Love, One of These Nights, Hotel California, and one of my favorites, The Long Run, and Life in the Fast Lane. I mean, he sang all these great songs. 1983, he goes solo. I've got MTV and they're playing that song, Dirty Laundry Like Crazy. Um... And I absolutely love that song. I love that song to this day. Who doesn't like that song? I mean, that's a, that's a great song, right? Uh, 84 puts out massive hit. 
uh, Building the Perfect Beast. I mean, this record is awesome record. It's got Boys of Summer, All She Wants to Do is Dance, Sunset Grill, Driving With My Eyes Closed, um, You Can't Make Love. What else has got? Um, these are Those are just huge hits, right? I challenge you to listen to a song on that record uh, that maybe you've never heard before. It's called The Month of Sundays. It's a slow song, depressing song about farming, um, but it's a great song. Give it a shot. Month of Sundays. Now you look at the tra the people who are guests, musicians on that album. First of all, it was the Heartbreakers of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers who were the main people who were consulted and played a lot on the songs there. But this is like a who's who. They had he has just, even if it's just singing backing vocals. He's got Randy Newman, Lindsey Buckingham, Belinda Carlisle, Martha Davis of the Motels, um, Patti Smith. Uh, J.D. Souther, I mean, he's got all these people on there. It's crazy. Then you move into 1989. He's got a little bit of a hiatus there. Uh, he puts out the end of, Innocent, end of the Innocents. And again, another huge record. Six million copies. Number eight in the country. Three singles. Uh, Heart of the Matter. Uh, this is the last worthless evening. And End of the Innocents. Also has New York Minute. I don't know if that, that wasn't even a top hit. Um, I Will Not Go Quietly, and How Bad Do You Want It? Those are some great songs. Also on this record, again, I don't know. How does he find all these people? Are they just hanging around? Are they just available? Even if, they, hey, you want to come down and just uh, record a, a backing track? Or do you want to just make a few noises on my record? Because some of them are really minor. But he's got Bruce Hornsby. He's got the Heartbreakers again. He's got Patti Smith again. He's got Axl Rose singing harmony on one of them. Edie Burkell, Melissa Etheridge, Cheryl Crow, Gloria Estefan, Maxine and Julia Waters. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, they just contribute like just a few things and then they leave. I don't know what they get paid. If they get paid at all, who knows? So, Don Henley himself. You really want to like this guy, right? I mean, his music is great. But he has never done anything to make you like him. <laughs> I mean, he just doesn't care. You watch that documentary, and he's basically like you want to like him. You wanna you want him to convince you that he's a good guy or cool or whatever it is, and you don't dislike him when you finish watching the documentary. But you just you're left saying to yourself, "Do I like Don Henley as a as a person? Do I like this guy? Like I I just can't tell. I, I just I don't know. He just I don't know." I, 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 Don, if you're out there, give me a call. Let's chat. Convince me. All right, so what are we doing for song of the day? For me, well, for my first reaction was to do Dirty Laundry. Uh, but that's because that's nostalgic for me, and I really like that song. But really, when you think about the summertime and just if you want to just have a great song, uh, I'm going to go with Sunset Grill because I actually like that song. Uh, a little bit more than Boys of Summer. I know everyone loves Boys of Summer, but Sunset Grill for me, whatever it is, I just love that song. Uh, so it's a Dog Days of Summer song. We're going to play that. I want you to crank it today. Brings back a lot of good memories. That's your song of the day. Don Henley, Sunset Grill. Turn it up tomorrow, Friday. Octane Friday. Shh, Octane Friday. It's going to be good. All right. Whew. Not too bad. Eight and a half minutes. All right. Song of the day. Enjoy it. And as usual, we'll see you on the flip side.